truth. I'm punch. I'm punch. I'm punch. I'm forbidden. Truth. I'm hot. My name is Marcus D. Adams, and unfortunately, I'm on San Quentin's death row in San Quentin State Prison. I've been incarcerated for 23 years this September 1st. I've been on death row 17 years this August 6th. My judge was Lance Ito, O.J. Simpson judge. The only difference between O.J. and me is I didn't have the money to buy a dream team of lawyers. I was convicted of bank robberies, carjackings, escape from Santa Barbara County Jail, accessory to murder and attempted murder, during the Lompoc Federal Credit Union robbery, assaults on inmates and deputies in the Santa Barbara County Jail and L.A. County Jail, three counts of murder and attempted murder in L.A. County, plus an attempted bank robbery and attempted murder of a security guard. I received 253 years, double life, and life without parole. Later, I was given the death penalty. August 6, 2003, I arrived on San Quentin's death row. Seven years later, I watched a program about a young woman named Santoya Brown who was convicted at the age of 16 for killing a man who was a child rapist and basically a pedophile. She was given life plus over 50 years for killing a child rapist. I received her address and wrote her an encouraging letter to never give up and to keep faith in God, to educate herself, stay positive, and never give up hope. She responded to my letters and her and I developed a friendship. We inspired each other to become better and to become better people. I have a great love and respect for Santoya B., even if I never hear from her again. I wish her all the best. Any man who rapes a woman or a child, or is a pedophile, deserves to be shot. Go, Santoya B. She's free and famous now. Enjoy it, Sin B. 5-26-2011 Dear Marcus, Thank you for your letter. I really appreciate all the encouraging words you offered. I hope this letter finds you well. I am sorry to hear of your situation, but I am glad to see you maintaining a positive disposition. I don't believe the state has the right to murder anyone, and God's law doesn't allow anything other than love and forgiveness, so I pray you find some type of relief. I do have access to education programs. I'm currently taking college courses through a local university. We're taking anatomy and philosophy right now. I love it. I couldn't agree more with you on the importance of education. Once again, thank you, Marcus, for writing and sending positive words and thoughts. Please take care and stay hopeful. Shalom, Centoya. 8-20-2011 Dear Marcus, Hey, how are you? I hope this letter finds you well. All is fine with me. I hate that you're locked down right now, but I pray you're making the best of your time. It's fucked up how everything happened with you. I don't say I blame you for anything you did. Rather, it'd be nice if people would mind their own business. I hate prison. I wasn't able to type this letter. I got a new job on the stupid paint crew, so I haven't had time to get to the computer lab. I took a vocational class, office technology, and learned to type and perform other office skills. It's pretty easy once you learn. You just have to remember which fingers press which keys and how a document is supposed to look. We have access to a computer lab, the Lipscomb students, but there is no internet connection. We can't go on Facebook or anything like that. I don't know what Facebook really is, but I have a page on there someone set up. I used to love the internet. There's so much information there. It's a shame we can't have access to it from prison. You're lucky you get to choose the shoes you get. Here, we get to pick from six or seven choices of ugly all-white Nikes, Reeboks, or New Balances. Can people send stuff to you from home, or do you have to have a certain vendor you order from? That's cute you have a name for your $2.99 sunglasses. We have some of the cheap sunglasses on our package list. But I'm not about to wear those ugly things. We can order D&G, Gucci, Ed Hardy, and other designer glasses and sunglasses, but we have to have a prescription. I tried to fail my vision test, but somehow I didn't, so I couldn't get a prescription. Oh well. Nicki Minaj is my wife. I'm in love with her. I swear. I'm not feeling all that crazy shit she wears sometimes, and I wish she'd change her wig, but other than that, I love her. Have you seen any of her music videos? And for the record, I don't feel life in prison and death row is the same. Life in prison is what it is. A life lived in a prison environment. Make of it what you can. Death row is being sent to a prison environment to be murdered. Death row is some bullshit. Yeah, it's messed up that we can't have CDs. They stopped that before I came. 
It's a security threat, they say. You can break the CD and cut someone. They took our cold and hot curlers because a pregnant girl burned her roommate with them, but the bitch hit the pregnant girl in the stomach. They take everything. It makes no sense. For real. We have razors, combo locks, soaps and socks, trash bags, and even newspapers, which men in the male prisons have been known to fashion into knives, and even a gun that fired a bullet. No lie. A CD is nothing compared to that. TDOC is stupid. I have heard motivation, though. I heard the remix of Big Ticker's Countdown. I loved it at first. They're played it out now, though. The songs I love now are Best Thing I Never Had, Beyonce, California King Bed, Rihanna, and some song I don't know the name of. It's a chick that sings, Take me away from here, away to paradise, away from all my fears, and no one ever has to know. Baby, you and I will keep it on the low, so no one has to know. It's the same beat as I Got Five on it, Satisfy You, by P. Diddy. I think I just really love the beat and melody line, not necessarily the words. So you don't want to write a book? Why not? There are several publishers. Just because one doesn't want you to change names doesn't mean another won't accept it. Why not just write it how you see fit and then present it to a few publishers? I'm writing a book someday, but I'm not going to tell anyone as I'm doing it. I don't want anyone's input into my creative process. When I'm done, I'll send it to some people to be edited and published. Your friend Kai wrote me and I wrote him back. I don't know if we'll continue writing though. I think he got the wrong impression about what a correspondence with me would be like. We'll see what happens with that. Yes, we can get books here. Soft and hardback books. It has to be sent straight from the publisher or bookstore or distributor. I've glanced at someone else's copy of The 48 Laws of Power, but I've never read it. It looked interesting. What are you reading right now? Me, Brain Bugs by Dean Buonomo and A Life Decoded by Craig J. Venter. The first is about a brain function. The second is a story about a brilliant scientist as he maps out his own genome, DNA. He goes through and gives his analysis of his DNA and his account of his life story. It's a great book. Don't know who sent it to me though. I don't have any pictures to send you. I found this copy of a printout from a function a few years ago, 2009. I'm on the top, the shortest one. This was the day I lost my first appeal. I'd found out a few hours before and I had to smile through the whole reception. Well, Marcus, I'll talk to you later. Try to stay out of trouble. Sincerely, Centoya. May 2nd, 2012. Dear Marcus, hi, how are you? I hope this letter finds you well. I am sorry that I have not written in such a long time. Please know that I have received your mail, and I have truly appreciated hearing from you. I have been working on my book, so I have not been doing much of anything else. I just started to look at my apathy with disgust and realized that I'm not doing anything, there is so much that I could be doing, so much that I should be doing, and so much that needs to be done, and I've been sitting around, just passing time really. So I decided at the start of the new year that I was going to spend this year writing. So far, I have completed the major planning and outlining of my book, and I've begun writing my first draft. I am only on chapter 2, but the structure of the book is together. It has been a long, tedious process. Writing a book requires much more than I thought. I'm excited about it though. I hope to have it completed by the end of this year. With that said, please understand if I slack with my letter writing. I want very much to continue writing and I will respond to your letters. I am just trying to pour most of my time and self into my book. Your correspondence means a lot to me though, so please don't ever doubt or discount that. Have you made any more decisions about writing your own book? I have just completed my spring course with Lipscomb. We took French and I have fallen in love with the language. One of the administrative staff members is from France and has been volunteering to tutor us in French twice a week. She is going to continue teaching us, although the course is over. We will take another French course in the fall semester. I am really enjoying my studies right now. It is so exciting to learn how to speak another language. My next class will be something about business communications. Sounds boring, but I'll see what I can make of it. I work on the paint crew here, but I don't paint. Confusing, I know. We painted for a little while but so many complaints were being made that the warden finally approved people to volunteer to paint. So now, everyone who had something to complain about concerning the paint crew are doing our jobs for us. It would probably be a little demeaning if it weren't for the fact that all the members of the paint crew are still getting paid for working, even though we are not working. It's the ideal setup for me. I get to spend all day getting paid to work on my book. When I last heard from you, you were on lockdown. How did that turn out? I can't believe they locked you all down because someone killed himself. How did he do it? So what did you think of reading The Coldest Winter Ever? It's by Sista Soldier, right? 
I read that book before. Right now, I am reading a book called The Good Book, A Humanist Bible. It's by a guy named A.C. Grayling. He compiled excerpts from the classic philosophers and literary giants and made one big Bible-like book. It's really good, actually. I'll have to write you some verses from it so you can see for yourself. Yeah, my mom comes to visit me regularly. The mother who raised me, that is. I am still not on speaking terms with my biological mother, Gina. I stand firm in my decision that she is not a healthy individual and that no healthy relationship can be formed between us. I believe that I am blessed with a loving and supportive family and that I'll focus on my concentration on them. Unfortunately, Gina has proven time and time again that she is not capable of being a part of that. My dad just recently got approved to come visit me and I may see him later this year when he retires from truck driving. I was able to speak to him on the phone yesterday for the first time in a long time. Between his work schedule and his new wife, it is a task to get a hold of him. I think we are trying to fix our relationship. It has not been great, of course. Maybe we can get to a place where we're not always going back and forth, not speaking for years, then reconciling, only to fall back and then not getting along. I'm going to close this out for now. I do hope this letter is well received, and you understand why I haven't written. Please know that I appreciate you, and I'm thinking about you. I hope to hear from you soon. Sincerely, Centoya. July 8th, 2011. Dear Marcus, Hey, how are you? I hope all is well. I am fine. It's been a rainy day today, so I'm kind of sleepy. I hope you don't mind that I'm typing this letter instead of writing. Some people prefer receiving handwritten letters. I just like to type my letters when I get a chance to come down to the computer lab. I type faster than I write, and it lets me keep up with my thoughts. And they don't have red printer ink. I don't understand why they won't let you have different color ink pens. That's stupid. What color are your uniforms? That's dumb. Technically, they only give us blue and black ink, but I pick up different colors from random places. My favorite colors are pink and purple. Your little niece is too cute. I'm glad to see that you're allowed to have contact visits. We only have one person on death row, and she has to have non-contact visits. She is also locked down 23 hours a day in solitary. That is great they allow you to get out and play basketball with other people. Our segregation is not like that. I was over there with her when I was on administrative segregation. When we wreck, we are put into separate cages. They're basically like dog kennels, really. They try to treat us like animals in any way they can, but of course. And I'm sorry, but I can't agree with you when you say that you can only blame yourself for being on death row. Not to get on my soapbox or anything, but no one seeking to discourage a behavior has the right to end someone's life. How asinine do you have to be to discourage something by doing the same thing? It's not right, but of course, it is typical. Our constitution is stained with innocent blood, and our government, as well as other countries' governments, has become so drunk with a sense of power that it has elevated itself to he who decides when death arrives. Pardon my audacity, but I believe that there is only one that fulfills that role. Call it nature, the universe, Allah, Jehovah, or Jesus. But it sure as hell ain't the state. So I don't agree with you when you say the blame is on you. The shame is on the state of California and all other states who sanction death. Anyways, what do I do all day? Nothing lately. I used to work as a landscaper, but I quit my job last Friday. I applied for cosmetology and building trades and residential technology, so we'll see what happens if I get into one of those classes before they stick me in the kitchen to work. Now I just come down to the computer lab and try to get caught up on my letters and homework. I'm closer to being caught up than I have been in months. Working on the yard all day didn't leave much time or energy to do anything else. We are allowed to have a television. We don't have cable though. We just get plain antenna reception, local programming. It is way better than nothing though. I hear talk that our new dickhead commissioner is considering taking our individual televisions like they do in Georgia where he came from. I don't believe that will happen though. We have radios too, but we can't have CDs. I wish I could listen to the CD you suggested, but I can't. I have heard it when I was out though. I just can't remember which one it is. Tell me some of how it goes. Yes, I did work out, but not as much as I used to. I did get super thick there for a second. I was like 205 pounds. I'm 145 now though. We don't have weights. They took them from us. We have a class called Zumba though. It is a Latin hip hop dance class. It's really fun. I mostly do yoga in my room and play volleyball a lot. I play almost every day in the warm weather, but in the colder months, I only play on the weekend. I should be doing way more. I know, but I still look good, so it's all good. And clarification, I am not 5'2". I am 5'2 and a half, which rounds up to 5'3". 
Thank you for the brochure on writerprisoner.com. I don't think I will be going on there though. One, I get way too much mail and I barely keep up now because a lot of people wrote me after the show. And two, it's too damn expensive. I have not received mail from anyone named Charlene. I hope I did not throw away a letter from Taco. I don't mean to sound stuck up or anything, but I usually don't write back to people in prison. I only write like three or four people in prison. If he has written and I have not responded, tell him to write again. I'm sorry. Well, Marcus, I'm going to close this for now. Take care. I hope to hear from you soon. Centoya.